here's what we've been waiting for. Absolutely delicious. Save yourself four to five hours, beef short ribs in the Instant Pot, an hour and a half. Hi everyone, I'm Stella V, and thank you for coming and cooking with me today. And for those of you just joining us, we spend our winters in Mexico. So here I am in Ajijic, Mexico for the next few months. On today's menu, beef short ribs. Now we'll be using the Instant Pot and we'll be saving some of your time by doing that. And if you're not prepared to make this dish today, come back and look at the video when you're ready. And thank you for subscribing. It's so inspiring to me to be able to bring these beautiful recipes to you. The star of the show, I've got beautiful beef short ribs. They're cut into about two or three inch pieces. I've got about two pounds here and they're well seasoned with salt and pepper and they're at room temperature. Along with that, we have some aromatics, our trio of sliced onions, carrots, and celery. Adding flavor, some brown sugar, soy sauce, balsamic vinegar, and some spices, garlic, and thyme. And the liquids we'll be using some red wine, dry red wine, beef stock, and a little slurry made from cornstarch at the end to thicken the gravy. And to add another layer of flavor, just a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste. There you have it. It's a very simple recipe, but it is going to be so delicious and you'll love serving it to your family and friends. We're going to start adding lots and lots of flavor by sauteing and browning our meat first. I've hit the saute button and I've added a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to the pot and now we'll be adding our meat and we're not going to overcrowd that pan. We'll be browning all of the sides. The key to delicious tasting food is adding layers and layers of flavor. And we started that with the salt and pepper seasoning our beef, and now the browning is adding tremendous flavor to the finished dish. Right now, it's sizzling, and you can tell that that means it's starting to brown. It'll take about three or four minutes to completely brown the pieces of beef. You'll know when the meat is sufficiently brown because it'll be really easy to pick it up and turn it over. If it's sticking to the pot, not ready yet. Now these are fairly substantial pieces, so you're gonna have to brown them on all four sides. The beef pieces are beautifully browned and you can see that caramelization. That caramelization means that there's delicious flavor that's been left in the bottom of that pot. And now it's time to start building even more flavor by adding our aromatics. That is our onions, carrots, and celery. The pot is still on saute and we'll be sauteing these vegetables for about three or four minutes until they're soft. Give it a good stir and make sure that you start taking any of the brown bits from the meat, lifting it off the bottom of the pot. Otherwise, you'll get a burn notice. You don't want that burn notice. If that happens, we'll have to empty the pot and start all over again. The vegetables have been cooking down for about three or four minutes and now we're ready to add the chopped garlic. 
you never add the garlic at the same time as the onions because it'll definitely burn on you. Right now, I'm putting them on top of the vegetables and that way it can cook down without burning. It's been about a minute and you can smell the garlic, you can smell the vegetables. It's really building wonderful flavor. The vegetables are soft, the garlic is infused, and now it's time to deglaze the pot. I'm using half a cup of red wine, a dry red wine. You can also use half a cup of beef broth if you don't want to use the wine. You can hear that sizzle. And now, really take your wooden spoon and scrape off any brown bits. I've completely deglazed the pot. There are no brown bits sticking and time to add the rest of our aromatics. I'm adding a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar, a couple of tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and some fresh thyme, a couple of sprigs. If you don't have fresh thyme, you can always use a teaspoon of dried. And the last ingredient to be added, two tablespoons of tomato paste, again, for more depth of flavor. I'm giving everything a good stir just to make sure it's all blended. And we are now ready to turn off the saute function. The last step is adding our liquid, which in this case is about a cup of beef broth. We've infused so much flavor into that sauce, and now we're ready to add the beef back into it. The beef is all nestled into this liquid, and make sure you just take every last bit of flavor by adding any juices that are in the pan. All the beef is now laid into that stock, settled amongst the vegetables, and it's ready to be pressure cooked. I'm now locking the lid into place, making sure it's at the sealing position. I'm using a duo, and the duo has an extra knob to make sure it's in sealing position. I've pressed the pressure cook button, and we'll be setting it now to 45 minutes. Now, 45 minutes. It may seem like a long time, but you can go ahead with your life, get on with other projects, and you don't have to worry about it. We're getting new subscribers every day, and I want to thank you. It's so encouraging. And if you like what you see, hit that like button. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Tell me if you've made this dish and how much you enjoyed it. We spend our winters in Mexico, so here I am. As we discover wonderful new places, I'll be sharing them with you. We have local butchers and marketplaces, and every week we're discovering new ones. 45 minutes in a pressure cooker, that is one of the longer cooking times. However, if you were to do that in your oven, it would take at least four or five hours to develop the same depth of flavor. We're in our final stages, and it begins by taking the lid off. Oh, wow, that a few finishing touches, and we're ready to serve. I love having these over mashed potatoes, which I had time to make while the ribs were cooking. I'm just removing these to a pan and I'm going to be adding a cornstarch slurry to the gravy just to thicken it a little bit. Now we're going to turn off the keep warm function and put on the saute button. I have prepared a cornstarch slurry and that is simply a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch with three tablespoons of cold water. I'm adding that into the gravy We'll be giving it a brisk whisking while it's on saute, and that way we're just really thickening the gravy a little bit. 
it just smells wonderful. There's so much flavor. And one of my favorite ways of serving short ribs is to put them over mashed potatoes. Once the gravy is as thick as you'd like it, you can either strain the vegetables out or I like to leave them in, just extra flavor. And there we have it. Absolutely fall off the bone, delicious. The depth of flavor is incredible. The smell is amazing and I can't wait to dig in. Final garnish, just some fresh flat leaf parsley. And here's what we've been waiting for. Absolutely, absolutely delicious. Save yourself four to five hours beef short ribs in the Instant Pot, an hour and a half. Cook with me, I'm Stella V. If you like what you see today, make sure you hit that subscribe button and, and the next video you should see is right here.